Hello, I'm Pierre Renoir. I paint lovely things. Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be painting my pet live on Facebook at the Steve Tracy Gallery. I'll be painting Willie with Steve. And if Willie walks through my palette, he'll be painting me. Welcome to Paint with Steve, live on Mondays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sorry about last week, we had some technical difficulties. But today we're going to continue with the announcement of that video uh, and that lesson. And today we're going to paint pets. Now, if you have a picture of your pet, uh, print it off on your printer. This is a picture of my cat, Willie. And he has been living with us um, in the country for five years. And he has, uh, he showed up one morning at 2.30 in the morning, weighing one pound. Now he weighs 13 kilos. Um, so I drew it out already. I have a warm ground or a warm background. I usually always paint a warm background. Uh, that's because people like warm paintings and that warm background will come through. Um, so I already, like I said, I already drew out my, my pet Willie on the uh, canvas. Um, it just so happens that Willie is black and white. Um, so that's really pretty, uh, pretty simple as far as colors go, but you definitely want to have different whites. Uh, so I mixed, I pre-mixed my palette using the same colors I always do, cobalt uh, blue, cad red, and titanium white with cad yellow and black. So all my colors consist of those three primaries and white and black. I have a couple of different tones of black. He has green eyes. Um, he's sitting on our dining room table. I'm going to paint a red background because I happen to like red and Willie gets into trouble a lot and red kind of uh, tells a story about trouble. Um, so you can see a little bit here where I have my, my cat image here and he's all, all drawn out um, and you can see that. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and start painting it. Um, I'm going to do my background first because I want the fur to come into the background. So this is basically the outline of my pet. Now, if you happen to have a parrot or a dog or a horse or a pet goat, um, even a little pet mouse or a rat, uh, get a good picture of it and uh, paint from the picture is probably easier than painting live because unless they're sleeping or staring at their, their food, you probably aren't going to get um, them to sit still too long. So uh, like I said, um, I'm going to paint the background first. I did pre-mix my paint. And so I'll show you my palette. Here's my palette, cobalt blue, cad red, cad yellow, cad red, deeper red with a little bit of blue in it, gray, lighter gray and white. And then I'll show you my other palette of grays. And here's my, my eye colors, green and yellow, and then different shades of, of black um, with a little bit of brown. So I'm um, going to use my two inch brush and one neat thing I found about acrylic paint is that I mixed this last week and I put it in the freezer. And I usually paint in oils and, and I'll put my oil paints in the freezer. It keeps them from drying out. I didn't know you could do that with acrylic, but look at that. The acrylic paint stayed nice and juicy. 
And so this is a uh, this is a burgundy red, and there the the back of Willie the back of Willie is coming up above the table. Oops, sorry about that. Um, that must have been on timer. Um, my assistant will take this for me and smash it against a rock. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I have Willie. It's, I would like this photograph uh, of Willie, where his backside is coming up over the table. Um, and also, my, my monitor that's recording this has a little bit too much blue in it. So you're, you're not seeing the, the, the truer color. And I, I'm going to pick up a, a, a live ca a camera that does live paintings uh, better. OK, so there's my background. Now I'm going to add some bright red just to give it some information. So I'm just adding some bright red here and there. Just in a, you might call it a blotchy application, just to give it an, an, a, uh, some more information here. Did I say my cat was 13 kilos? He's eight kilos. Yeah, he, he, but he is very rotund. When he came on our farm, I got to tell you this. Um, he only weighed like like a pound, like one kilo, and uh, or a half a kilo, and and ever since, and he was starving to death, and ever since we've had him, he's always been starving to death. So he always gets more food than he should, and now he's overweight. But I named him Willie because he reminds me of Willie the whale. Remember the movie Free Willy? And since we kind of saved his life, we called him Free Willy. So now he's Free Willy the cat. Okay, so we got our background. And it's got good brush strokes. You want to, what I call, finish your brush strokes. So just go different directions, different dapplings. Just finish your brush strokes and see the, the different colors of the red, give that red um, some entertainment and what I would call information to look at. It's things for the viewer to look at. So that as they're looking in that red, that field of red, they are being entertained with different values of red. Okay, so that's my red background. Now I'm going to paint my tablecloth, which is kind of silver. Okay, so I have the photo next to me. And I'll paint in the darker shades first. So this is a darker silver coming into the coming by his tail. The tablecloth is a little bit folded, so it has some shadow in it. So I'm painting, generally, most painters, when they paint traditionally, you do your darkest colors first. And so I always make sure that my darker colors um, are dark and I don't want them to be too light. And, and that seems to be the mistake of a lot of artists is that when they mix their colors, they mix them too close together in the same value. And so when you're looking at your reference that you're painting from, um, really try to find the darkest darks. Okay, so I'm just bring, going to bring that down like here. And 
I'm going to probably need a smaller brush for behind the ear and the, and, and the, uh, the head. So I'll use a smaller brush. Now this is a, I believe this is a number six bright. Okay, so just paint it in that gray color. Okay, and we're going to take this gray color right up to the red. And this is acrylic. I'm, I painted many more oils than acrylic. Acrylic, it's hard to get soft edges with acrylic. And the way you do that is with a wet brush. We're just softening this edge. Keep the top side of the brush in the red, the bottom side of the brush in the gray. Drag it across. Squeegee your brush with paper towel to keep it clean if you're going to go into another part of the painting with a different color. So I just wiped out the, the paint to go into this gray. I'm not going above into that soft edge right in here. I want to keep that soft edge. Okay. Now um, I'm going to take some of this around, some of this darker color. This is my dark tablecloth color. So just around, I call him Fat Willie. Just around Fat Willie's belly. And right below his, his chest. And, and so the light is coming from the left. And so my shadows are on the right. And that, okay, there we go. Okay. I'm going into a lighter gray. You see that? A little bit lighter gray. And I'm just adding to the information in that gray field. And I'm working up the scale of values. So lighter gray. Take the brush and dapple it into the field of darker gray. Okay, now I can probably go back into my two inch, into my inch and a half brush. Now I'm going to go into quite a bit lighter gray. Okay, so that's quite a bit lighter. Okay, the other gray is still wet, so I can go ahead and blend it. This is the time you need to do that. Do it while it's still wet. Okay, just some strokes. Maybe this could be part of the fabric. Okay. Some strokes in here, getting a little bit dry in there. That's okay. I'm going to let the dryness work for me. Okay, so I'm going to touch the darker color. Okay, so we're going kind of working fast. I, since it is acrylic, it dries quickly. And we don't have a lot of time to blend wet on wet before it does dry. So just taking some of these brush strokes in, into here. Okay. Um, I'm going to dip it back into the darker gray. And here's a little bit of a fold in the tablecloth. I'm going to record that. Here's a little bit of shadow in the tablecloth. I'm going to record that. And 
now I'm going into a lighter gray. Okay. Oh. Going to lighter gray here. That's the fabric going back into the background. Uh, take here's some of the, the tablecloth that's being lit by the light. Just a little highlight there. Okay, so it's going to unload the paint onto the canvas while it's still wet, working somewhat briskly. Now you can take your time and and if you find a pattern that's developing because the paint's drying too fast and your brush may not be cooperating. Try to see if you can let that, whatever's happening, work for you. See where the challenge becomes, make the difficulty an asset. That's kind of like what we're going through right now with this isolation, COVID, pandemic is how can we make it an asset? How can we turn turn it into something positive? And one thing that I'm learning by going through this is to be patient and tolerant and to be a little bit more loving to my fellows because um, it's challenging, you know, not getting what you want. And uh, we all want freedom, but we can't take it right now. Okay, so there are, there, that is my background. And I'm going to restate my darks even a little bit darker right in the, where it goes into the, the shadow of the cat, just to indicate a little bit more and then while it's still wet, kind of scuttle the brush into the wet part to give it that painterly look. Okay, I'm gonna just a little bit here at the tail. And maybe a little bit on this side here. Okay, so you see how that is beginning to give it a three-dimensional look. It's beginning to make it look make it look like he's actually laying on something soft and fluffy. Um, okay. And I think that that is looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to start with my, now I, I just for your information, here's a spray bottle. I use my spray bottle to spray my palette. So I'm just giving it two sprays. You hear the noise? That's the spray, and that just keeps it wet. And so as you're working, if you're going to take a long time, uh, spray your, your palette to keep it moist. Okay, so I'm just going to record the eyes. I'm using this bigger brush. Now this is my the darkest green. So this is my darkest green. I have three colors of green that I'm going to use. We'll start with that. And while I got that there, I might as well go ahead and record his irises. This is a one-op brush. This is good for fine detail. Okay, so got a funny story. So Willie, we didn't know where he came from. And about six months later, I went up to my neighbor's farm and they have a dairy farm. I just wanted to take my, take my father, George, into the dairy farm to look at the cows. And we, when we went into the farm, there were 20 of little Willies. So that's where he came from. 
Okay, so let's, while we're doing the black, let's go ahead and do his, his black nose. His, his nose kind of looks like an upside, upside down fleur de lis. Got a little bit of, there we go. Just a nice little black nose. Okay, now I kind of lucked out in having a pet that's black and white because he is black and white and he's kind of looks like a jigsaw puzzle. He, uh, to me, the challenge is pretty easy. So I'm going to take my big inch and a half brush. I'm going to go into my pure black and I'm just going to render the black part of Willie. Now I'm not worried about the, the feathering of the fur yet. Okay, well, for those just joining, welcome. This event is posted on our Facebook page and you will be able to refer to it uh, later at any time. So share it with your friends and please post your paintings. Okay, so my drawing is basically kind of like a paint by number. You determine the different shapes. And when you're doing a painting of a, of a pet, usually the, the pet has shapes of different colors. And so it's, it's all going to be just a shape and a color. So don't be overwhelmed with, well, I don't know how to do it. All it is is a shape and a color. And in this case, it's black and white. So that, I, you know, kind of lucked out here. Now I used to have a border collie, which was black, white, and brown with long hair. Okay, so I, I don't want, I'm not going to connect the tail to the, to the back because I want to see where that edge is. But I am going to go ahead and paint the whole tail. Now his whole tail, his whole tail is black. Now at this stage, I don't want to leave any edges on the paint. I want to keep it smooth so that in case it dries a little bit, and I'm leaving, as you can see, some of the yellow coming through. And that's okay. Remember what I said, a warm background makes a warm painting. So, and that just adds warmth to the painting. Okay, so I just painted in his, his identifying marks. So these shapes identify Willie. And this is well, my, my wife loves Willie. She said she's going to keep this painting for Mother's Day. And paintings make a nice present. It's a great way to, oops, I can see where I made, a mis I made a mistake there. I forgot to paint in this gray. So just take the brush and just kind of scuttle, oops, scuttle the brush. Yeah, there you go. Use a finger. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Use whatever whatever you got available sometimes. My very first painting, I didn't have any paint brushes, so I used toothpicks. And toothpicks don't make very big shapes. But I painted a tree with toothpicks, and guess what? All the leaves became just little dots of toothpicks. I think I painted like 500 of them. Okay, so... We got that little bit of gray, no problem. There's no problems with paintings. There's only solutions. So we make the problem become a challenge for this, the right solution. And that's a neat, what's neat about that is that that's a lot like life. You know, we take the problem and we make the challenge into a, it's kind of like a, a test to find the solution 
And for me, I don't know about you, but I find that the solution for most everything is love. And so, you know, and this applies for this too, because the answer is love. How can I, how can I love more? Speaking about love, I got to tell you, without people driving, and with air, not air, airplanes aren't flying. The songbirds in our garden are so. There's so many songbirds this year. I don't know if you've noticed that, but we got many more songbirds. Okay, be um, bold with your your strokes. Don't be. He has a little bit of a. His hair goes up a little bit with a, at a point right in the middle. I brush him every day. Well, we took him to the vet, and she knew that we were going to rescue him. I left that little bit of yellow right there, and I'm going to leave a little bit of the yellow on the edge of his cheek. Okay, so he's got these. Well, the veterinarian said, this cat is going to be the luckiest cat in the world. And, well, guess what? He is. He gets food five times a day. Not a lot, just enough to spoil him. Look how that eye pops out. So this is the, I like doing the eyes. The eyes are, well, the light of the soul is what they say. And with Willie, they show that he's up to trouble. <laughs> okay, so the center of the ears are gray. So we're just going to put the gray in there. Okay, the edges, it goes into black. Still wet, that's good for the blending. I gotta re I'm referring to my, my reference, which is my photo. I'm just looking at my photo. See? To see how it's looking. Reference your photo to see how it's looking. Okay? So that's what's good about photos is that they stand still. Okay, so now we're doing his little he's got a little cute little white face. Okay, and yeah, some people paint pets for a living. People like to have their pets memorialized. Now, the fur goes around the nose, but I'm going to use a lighter black just to show The difference between the nose. I want the nose to be black. Okay. So let's see. And I, so I'm just checking my markings. Refer to your reference, which is your photo. And we're just doing that. Okay. So um, I always, I always. Um, say queso, which is Spanish for cheese. So queso, so queso, here we go. Um, I always start using metaphors of food around lunchtime. So it's just about lunchtime for me. But um, I might have a queso sandwich. Anyway, um, 
I want to thank everyone for, you know, joining us here, having fun with us at Paint with Steve. Um, and uh, please leave your comments uh, with your questions or suggestions. Don't forget to post your paintings. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to paint the white. Now I have a dark or a light gray right here. I'm going to start my white using that light gray. So I'm going to paint all the whites with the light gray. And it probably looks white on, it does look white. It looks white on the screen. But this is actually a, it's not a dark gray, it's a mid-tone gray. So I'm going to paint. Okay, don't be afraid to do, you know, bold strokes. So this is actually gray. So we'll be doing all the white in this gray. I'm using my number six bright brush, or people call it chisel brushes. Maybe I'll go to the inch and a half brush. The inch and a half brush is definitely what they call a workhorse. I'll wash out the black that's in it because we don't want that to turn black. That gray will turn turn black. If your brush is dirty, um, you'll get a dirty painting. So always make sure that you clean your brushes in between color. Yeah, so you could see, look how this big brush can get a lot of different shapes, even small ones. Try to use the biggest brush you can. You don't want to be locked into doing painting a painting with a small brush or else you're going to be dab dabbing little little shapes and your whole painting is going to be little little shapes and then you'll be working a lot harder painting is supposed to be fun okay so are you having fun okay so fun Anyway, um, I want to welcome all of our friends from Ontario, from Colorado, the mountains of Colorado, and my friend from Ontario, Margaret, right before class dropped off some fresh rhubarb. So thank you, Margaret, for the rhubarb and, uh, and her wonderful husband, Lauren. I want to welcome our buddy Bobby in Denver in Lakewood, Colorado and all of our friends at Foothills Art Center in Golden. A little bit of white goes up right there and okay so hey 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 now we gotta go into his mouth Watch when you get close to the face that you don't get too uh, loose because that's the character of this character named Free Willy. And let me tell you, he loves it out here in the country. Um, he had a hard time during the winter because he was spoiled outside. But he finally... We got him a lot of toys. Well, this is going to, my wife is going to love this painting. Yeah, we used to have a parrot. And uh, the parrot died. After 25 years, we had to bury the parrot. Um, and that's sad when that happens. But, you know, we're all going to go sometime. So it's good to consider what are you doing with your life? Are you making it lovely? I think that's the best thing that we can do. Okay, so look at that. Doesn't he look like a character? Okay, so um, let, the, um, let this dry. We're going to go back into his eyes and I'm going to get out my one-aught my one brush. 
Okay, so I'm going to go into my green color and I'm looking at my photo and sometimes you can you can go ahead and touch the painting if you need to rest your hand. But I do need to rest my hand because I don't want to move it. If you go over the edge of the painting. Now this is a little bit lighter green and you may not be able to see it, but we're going to post this back again on Facebook and it will be a little bit clearer. Okay, so I'm going to go with a, a lighter white, lighter yellow. So just add white to that yet to yellow. And we're just giving the little tweaks in the eye, the sparkles. Okay, and and then we're going to add, just go to white, and this is where the light of the window and is just sparkling on the edge of the eye. You see that? So that gives it a, gives the eye a lot of dimension. And it gives it what I call spirit. Now there's a little bit of a white, right in the black. And a little bit over here. Okay, and then there's a little bit of shadow in the green right above where the eyelid is. And it's making, and it's shadowing the green right above where the, where the eyelid is creating a shadow. Okay, and, and they're, they're just so slightly, it's hard to see it, but just a tiny, tiny, that light is coming from the window. So I'm just adding a little dot of blue. And it's just coming from the outside. Now, that to me is really cool looking. And I'm going to also touch up, or not touch up, but highlight the nose. See that? Now, that little, that right side is a little bit too light, so I'm just going to darken that a little bit more. Okay, now I'm ready to highlight the fur. The fur has different lights and darks in it. We're going to start with our darks. Okay, we have a pretty good looking cat here. And I just, I cleaned my brush and then I took it and just make it really dry. Okay, so it's nice and dry. Okay, so I'm just going to dab it in the gray, in the dark, dark, black rather. And I'm just going to dry brush it where there is highlight on the fur. And right here where the, the white is going into the black, it's creating a gray tone where the white fur is going into the black fur and where the black is going into the white. 
those edges are kind of gray. Okay, I want to keep my brush uh, fluffy and dry. I just dab it into the paint. You can always go back in with some black. Get a little bit on the head. Oh, a little bit too much. That's okay, I can. Okay. Now we want to we want that to go on every edge where the black is going into the gray. And that's, that it, it actually is softening the edges. Okay, I'm just going to take some of this over here and put some in the ear. Okay, and I can I can touch it in the black, and just kind of clean up a little bit where it was a little bit heavy. Well, Willie is a one-man cat. He doesn't like other cats. He had another cat. Oh boy. He was he wasn't as nice to us as he as he was to that other cat, that's for sure. But you could see we don't want that to happen to us when we want to be able to be nice to everybody. Okay, so that's um, pretty much the highlights on the black. Now we're going to do the highlights on the white. And this is going to be really fun because it's really going to pop. So I'm going to take my, my next whiter, whiter white. It's not pure white. But you see how that's really popping the, the fur or the, the anatomy. So that's the shoulder muscle. I might, I'm going to have to go in with that smaller brush. A little bit of dry brush going into the gray tablecloth just to give it that soft furry look. Okay, this is going to go all the way up to the face. And on the left side of the, the paw. So this is just determining his structure, which shows that he really, um, he has little feet. But he's got a big belly. These are his toes, even some some gray in between to show the different toes. That just that little bit of indication shows his toes. And you see how his toes, well, they, they look like a little rabbit's foot. Okay, so bring this over here. Bring some of this white into the black. And do the same here. Oh my gosh, this is turning out so pretty. Well, he's looking, he's looking like a plush toy. Okay, so we want to 
I'm going, I'm going back into, well, this is, a, this is the, I'm using some of the, the original gray right here. Now, remember I said that that's this color wet. Um, acrylics dry about 10% darker. So that will dry as dark as what's right next to it. So I'm just giving that a soft edge. And let me take a smaller brush. And coming in here. And let's take on some little tufts of fur that are coming in here, some tufts of fur in here. My brush is drying out, which is good. So it gives us nice dry brush technique. And tufts of fur there. Little fluffy fur going into the Don't want him to get too. I don't want him to get any fatter than he is, right? So I mean, that's the key: is keep it. Don't let it grow as your. Don't want your shapes to grow if they're growing out of your drawing. If they're getting bigger than your drawing. Okay, so um, then we got some tufts in here. Tuft there, tuft there. Yeah, this is that's where his big belly is. Yeah. Well, that is just so adorable. Okay, so it's going to go around here. Okay, and now we're just about done. Okay, so now I'm going to take, I'm going to use the palette knife. Okay, so here's a plate. So I'm taking the plate and I'm just putting some white on the plate. I can't see it. See it there? Takes a little bit of white, taking a little bead of it, and I'm gonna do some whiskers. Oh, a little fat there. So, I'm gonna, so to fix that, I'm gonna take some black. And we need to thin out that, that whisker. There. Okay, so going back to the whiskers. You can see where it's really easy to get those whiskers to Too fat. And he does have these eyebrows. Just like grandpa's eyebrows. One or two hairs, right? Okay, so let's take just about done. I'm going to take the, 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 the big inch and a half brush. And I just want to touch some hairs in his ears. There. Well, it is not, um, this is not an illustration, this is a painting. So I think it looks pretty darn good. I want to sign it.
Well, there you have it. Willy, free Willy. So here's my my drawing or my my reference rather, and there's Willy. Not bad. So I hope you had a good time today. I hope you learned something. And I want to thank everybody. If you haven't already liked us on our Facebook, please take a moment and like our page. Tell your friends. And you guys take care. I love doing this. And God bless you guys. Bye for now.